This is Janine from Pangolin. Thank you for joining my Lightroom course for wildlife photographers. Today I want to speak to you about the underlying structure of Lightroom, its hierarchy. I know we're all super keen on getting started with our editing, getting our images imported and looking at them. However, if you do not understand the underlying structure of Lightroom, you will not be able to use its organizational skills to the best of your advantage. So let's get started and dive straight into Lightroom. Welcome to Lightroom guys. This is my Adobe Lightroom Classic and I have my private catalog open. Generally Lightroom is set up in a way that on the left hand side you have all the organizational structure. In the middle you always see the images and on the right hand side is what you can implement in those images depending on which chapter, library, develop, map you have open. Today we're going to focus on our underlying structure within our library and we're going to have a look at the three split hierarchy of Lightroom. Lightroom usually goes chronologically, it's very intuitive. So we're going to start with the first structure, which is our catalog. Our catalog is the overall umbrella structure of our entire filing system. You will see that all my images in my catalog are just over 30,000 images. That is of the past five years. And it doesn't matter where these images sit. If you have them sitting on different hard drives, on your computer, if they're maybe on some backup disk of yours, all images are registered within your catalog. Your catalog is also the key to read all the changes that you make to your images and implement them in your photograph. Whether that means your keywording, your editing, you are organizing them through flags, all these little changes are read by and implemented by your catalog. What is your catalog exactly? You will see it sits within your folder structure, whether that is your finder on a Macintosh or whether that is your folder structure on a Windows computer, it doesn't matter. And I've got my catalog saved straight on my computer under my pictures. And you will see Janine Photography, the cat file here, that is my catalog, an incredibly important file without which you will not be able to read and operate the photographs that you have imported into Lightroom. Because it is such an important file, I suggest you do regular backups. You can do that the old fashioned way by simply copy and pasting this file onto a different hard drive where you can keep it safe. However, Lightroom also does automatic backups. You'll see I have an automatic backup folder set up here. My latest backup was on the 28th of April. And to make sure you always keep the newest, latest updates, I suggest you back up your catalog on a regular basis, depending on how often you shoot. If you go into your Lightroom Classic tab and you go down in your drop down menu, under catalog settings, you have the option under the general tab to choose how often you would like your Lightroom catalog to be backed up. I currently have it set to once a week. So when I close down my Lightroom, you will see that it automatically asks me whether I want to quit and afterwards whether I would like to back this catalog up. Now that we have a rough understanding of our catalog, I want to go further down in the hierarchy and speak about our folder structure. Our folder structure is basically where our photographs are located. And it's the most intuitive of all of them because it's very similar to how we would file images on our computer. 
So this folder structure replicates a folder structure that is actually set up either on your computer or on an external hard drive. I would generally suggest that you keep your images on your external hard drive if you work on a laptop because images are large, laptop space is restricted and you really don't want to jam up your laptop with an enormous amount of data because it slows it down incredibly. If you have a set desktop and you have a large enough hard drive space, you can have this folder structure mirrored in your desktop. So my folder structure is set under my JK Photos, which is my external hard drive, and is set up chronologically. You'll see I have my year 2020, I have my month, and underneath my month I have every single day. So this folder structure is mirrored in my document system on my computer. You can see I have my year, my month, my day, and in here I have all my images where they actually physically sit. And not just that, I also have little .xmp files. Those .xmp files are the files that hold all the changes. So my changes are not written directly into my original CR2 file. They are written in a separate text file that will only be implemented once you merge these two and export the image again. So to sum it up, our folder structure is where our images live. And you never want to touch an image through your actual folder structure or finder on your computer. Whenever you change, rename, delete or edit any of the files that sit on your computer or your hard drive directly, Lightroom will not be able to follow the link anymore and not find the image. What you then see is those nasty little question marks sitting next to your folder saying that they cannot find them. What you can do is find the missing folder and try and relink the folder to the images to wherever you have them shifted. Much easier, however, you can shift, rename and do whatever you need to do straight in your folder structure in Lightroom. I can right click, I can rename them, I can remove them, I can drag and drop files within my 2020 folder to anywhere else I would like to sit. That way Lightroom will automatically know what you have done to the images and there is no need to relink them. Last in our hierarchy structure are our collections. And our collections are virtual space in which you can group or organize your photographs. So collections would be very similar to the folder structure you might have had previously. You can have collections to find images for competitions. You can have collections to find images for trips you do, such as Cuba, Galapagos. You can have collections for your Facebook or social media posts, or you can have collections set up under wildlife species in order to find them more easily. Collections give you all the freedom in the world to group your images as you want them. While your images will still be housing in your folder structure, you can group them into as many collections as you want because it is only a virtual link to wherever your images originally sit. So if I have a look at my Galapagos collection, I can see my first image here is a beautiful tortoise and I want to know where that image is actually placed. I can right click, say go to folder in my library and will lead me straight back to February 2017 where I have shot this image of a tortoise. Another option you have is to right click on it and to actually find this in your finder or in your folder structure on your computer or hard drive. But I suggest you only work on your images through your Lightroom. 
you do not touch your images anymore on your computer, on your hard drive, through previous methods that you might have used. And therefore, you really need to find your image in your finder structure. What you need to remember about collections is that they do not jam up any more space on your hard drives because it doesn't matter in how many folders you have these elephants sitting. You can have them in your elephant folder, your Facebook folder, your Chobi 2019 folder. It is irrelevant. The file only exists once and that one time it exists, it sits in your library. The collections are only there to help you find your images more easily. How do you create another collection? You would press on the plus sign here on the top right hand side. You can create a collection, name it. You can choose whether you want this particular image already to be part of this collection. You can set it as a target collection, which means you're currently working in this collection. This is your hit collection. Or you can sync it with your Lightroom. You can set any of these collections as your target collection. If I would take my Facebook folder as an example, I can right click on it and set it as a target collection, creating a little plus sign behind it. And therefore I know this is the collection I'm currently targeting or working with. To extend this a little bit further, we can also create smart collections. Smart collections work according to a set of rules, so you don't need to populate them yourself by drag and dropping files into these folders. You can set up any sort of rule you want that you need to have a rating of your images that is greater or equal to a certain number of stars, that you could have a certain label, that you could have a certain text, a certain file name or a certain date. A certain metadata such as a certain shutter speed or a certain ISO. All of these things can be used to organize your pictures automatically so that Lightroom will file them into specific collections without you having to lift a finger. How handy is that? To begin with, your Lightroom will automatically set up a set of smart collections for you. You'll have your video files in one folder. You will have all your recently modified images in one folder, all your best rated images in one folder, which will give you number one, an idea of what you can do with smart collections very easily. And number two, gives you a much easier time to find the most recent, most important images you have worked on. While we've talked about smart collections, we can go back to our catalog one more time and see that we also have a quick collection in our catalog. Our quick collection is a collection we have quick access to that is always up there in the catalog to be found. Our quick collection is a collection that we have easy access to. So if you have specific images you want to find quickly, you don't want to search through a number of collections down below here, you can have them in your quick collection under your catalog. To sum it all up for you guys, number one, we have a catalog, which is our umbrella structure sitting over all our images. The catalog is able to decipher and implement everything we do in our folder structure. Our folder structure is the second bit of the hierarchy that holds all our images. Thirdly, we have our collections, which are there to fine tune our organization. Within our collection, we can create virtual copies and group our images in whatever thematic scheme you would like to. That is our overall Lightroom structure. I hope this module of my Lightroom course gave you a better idea of what Lightroom is capable of. So now we need to start thinking, how do we want to organize our pictures? I see you again in my next module.